Previously on Drake Paragon. Fishing boats are What's that product? Cancer. <laughs> Those her immersion suits finally made it to Gloucester. Save your ass. America's oldest seaport. The Gorton Seafood Center. It was written about in the book The Perfect Storm. Never heard about a window walk being <laughs> That's a crow's nest right there. I want to go on a road. Look at that. And she just finished drinking them. Paragon's new mugs. So we're going to go have dinner at a chop's house. <laughs> he was up here looking at him. He goes, why doesn't he just get the blue chalk and just do one <laughs> giant X? <laughs> But I can order one and just have it shipped. Yeah. It's like, you know, two day air from West Marine. So, what do you do when you're on the road, so to speak, on the seas? Yeah. And you need to have, like, you want to get mail. What was that? What was that? Here we are in Gloucester, Massachusetts at my friend Joff's tent where he's been working on Strombus. It's a beautiful boat. Three wooden boat tents. One of them got out. <laughs> wow. Is that a steamer? That is my steamer. I'm, That's I'm your steamer. It bigger for the mass tube project. It needs to be a little bit. Taller. Wow, how does this work? Well, it has doors at either end and it's all closed up. And a, a, a boiler made out of an old propane tank sits on a cooker, which is basically just this, a burner that burns propane. The water boils, comes through the hose, the hose gets pushed onto this, fills the box with steam. After a certain amount of time, you pull your pieces out and bend them around a form. They're really flexible mm -hmm. when they like come hot, out. Like wet pasta. Really? Like wet well, pasta? Well, I'm exaggerating, but yeah. that's the idea. You take a piece of wood, it's not flexible, you heat it for an hour per inch of thickness, and you can bend it into whatever shape you want. Wow. Any luck at all. What's that thing sticking out of your tent? That's the top of my mainmast. Oh, it is? Yeah. Wow. It's a boat. <laughs> it's a painted boat. I never saw her with bottom paint on. Uh -huh. Isn't it beautiful? Beautiful. Oh, uh, caution, safety glasses, hard hat, work boots must be worn on the job. <laughs> and they actually, with the exception of work boots, they never are. <laughs> How long have you had Strombus? Help. <laughs> We've had Strombus since... No, more like 2002. 2000, 2002 or 2003. 10 years. 10 yeah. years. 10 years. And somebody wow. told us when we bought a wooden boat. Oh, wooden boat. Okay, so we thought we'd get this boat and we were going to fix this boat up in nine months and we were going to live on her. Yeah. The harbor. Out in the harbor. And somebody said, oh, yeah, yeah, wooden boat. Haha, ha, that'll take 10 years until she's done. And Remember. I said, Hell no, not us. We're different. It's not going to take We're us different. 10 years. We're going to we get had... this boat done. And then we had a child. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then a second child. Uh -huh. And then we bought a house. A 200 year old house. 200 year old house. Wow. So I wasn't here for three years. I <laughs> yeah. can't count those three years. Right. I literally stepped away and did not come here. Yeah. For three more years. More than three times. 
for three years. Wow. Yeah. And when I came back, it was as if no time had passed at all. The same people come by to visit. It's a, it was a weird lens on how time works. How long did you work on her before you stopped working on her for those three years? It's five, six years, part-time, yeah. three days a week, sometimes 10-hour days, 12-hour days. Yeah. What was she like when you first got her? And can you, you can done? I show you pictures? Yeah. Oh That's what she looked like when I pulled the deck off. You ripped the whole deck off? Yep. Did you keep it? The no. deck? No. No. There so, was yeah. nothing to keep. It was a flush deck. The only thing that's left of all of that stuff is the keel. That's it. Yeah. Just the keel. You can see I marked things for replacement, which yep. was ridiculous because I just went ahead and replaced <laughs> it all. <laughs> Remember Jonathan Rackles said, why don't you just get... Maybe I never told you this. He was up here looking at it and he goes, why doesn't he just get the blue chalk and just do one <laughs> giant X? <laughs> <laughs> so or, originally you were thinking you would just I would replace just every other plank to get rid of the wide seams and put a new deck on her. That was the whole plan. The boat is 80 years old, so yeah. the seams are really wide. You could go in the head to have a pee, yeah. and you could keep track of traffic on the harbor <laughs> through the seams. <laughs> that was just above the waterline? Yeah, the whole top sides, you know. Yeah, she didn't leak like crazy. Yeah. So I thought I would replace every other plank, but then when you get into it, you find it's been sanded so many times that the at the hood ends of yeah. the stems, it's only five eighths of an inch thick, and you're putting on a plank next to that that's mm. an inch and three quarters. Oh my God! And you can't put that on and then grind right. all that off, you know. So then it became I had to make a new rabbit. And to put all new planks, and then I started replacing frames, and then, and it just went on and on. It was like, you know, yeah. And we were, we were just like pulling our hair out in this little tiny cottage in the middle of the winter, going, ah, what are we doing? We're supposed this? to be living on a boat. We're supposed uh, to be what are we doing? Like, and then the boat uh, ripped apart. Yeah. In retrospect, yeah, it would have been, it would have made a lot more sense to buy a cruising ready boat and go sailing but this project has meant something different for us we it means something different for mandy and it means something different for me but for me it's been like a uh learning how to take on a project that takes 10 years and deal with it in your head and just not yeah and and yeah it's learning how to deal with a big project yeah and stay with it and finish it and do it wow and what does it mean to you? <laughs> it's, it's been heartbreaking and aggravating and infuriating at times, but all in all, it's, it's been a really cool journey and project, and it's, it's like it's something to look forward to, you know, like this, we have this project and we're really looking forward to it being done. Yeah. And it's, I mean, Joss works so hard and is such an amazing yeah. craftsman that it's gonna just, it's, it's gonna be great. And it's, I'm through. I'm done with all that being upset about it taking so long. I'm all done with that now. I'm just excited. I don't care how long it takes now. To complicate things even more, it's that um, we, when we started, we were gonna try to finish it up and then move on board mm -hmm. and see where we would end up. But then when the, when, once we got a house, then it changes. Yeah. yeah. And you have to start thinking about it in a different way. For example, when we launch, there won't be an interior. There won't be an interior when you put it in the water. Nope. And no, we'll but just we just got new thermal rest, so we yeah. will sort of have an interior. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a cabin and we have a, a, we have a stove, a Coleman hey. stove. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you'll have a cabin sole. We'll have a cabin sole. Yeah. We'll have a cabin sole, so we'll be good. We'll have a cabin sole, we'll be ballasted. We'll have the through holes that we need to run the motor. Yep. Pump some water in for washing dishes or what have you. We'll have some kind of little basin. 
A bucket with sawdust. A bucket with some... Composting <laughs> <toilet>. Yeah, <laughs> composting toilet. Yeah. So you built this whole framed tent. The old roof is collapsing, but there's a clear plastic sheet over that, and I'm going to put another sheet of white plastic because it's too hot in here right now. It's like a greenhouse. Yeah, it is a greenhouse. Yeah. Feels good right now. Feels good now, not not on a 90 degree day or no. even a 70 degree day. It's, huh. it's hot. Oh, you got zinc's on. Mm -hmm. There it is. Oh, wait a minute, it's not hooked up? No, there's a bracket that bolts here. Oh yeah. That holds it in place. So right now it's just hanging on the ground. Wow. Mm -hmm. This little wear line right here ends up right up there. So it's, it's about 10 inches below where it should be. Yep. Wooden rudder. Mm -hmm. What kind of wood is that? It's oak. Oak. And this open seam. With any luck at all, that will close back up when she takes up water. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. It will because be an amazing amount of swelling. That's huh. 10 years old, 10 years out of the water. So that wood will soak up the water and expand, and it will fill that hole. Amazing. Are you going to insulate her? No. No. It's a small enough space. The wood is an inch and a quarter thick. There's no need. No need. I had frost forming on stuff. I would, but I, I don't anticipate that that will be a problem. I want to be able to see every piece of planking and framing from the inside that, I... that I could possibly see if I yep. keep track of the rot and mold and everything. So is this oak? That's ash, actually. That's, That's ash. The... That's it's still got the bark on it. Yeah. I've never seen that. I've oh, never yeah. seen pieces of the tree that have been cut into boards and still have the bark on each side. Yep. That is so cool. So those were cut out to make mast hoops for schooner adventure, and some of it I'm going to use to make hoops for Stromus. So the foremast will have traditional gaff rig and yep. hoops. When you first got Strombus, she had a concrete ballast in the bilge, didn't yeah. she? Concrete and like crushed up machine parts. Crushed up machine? Crushed up gears, broken gears and cast iron. And I remember you chiseled all that out. Yep. Well, we bashed it all out with chisels and hammers. You took it out because you wanted to look at the planks? Yeah, we took it out because it was like old and crumbly. Yep. The hull just needed to be addressed. Like every through bolt in the keel that was covered up by the concrete had to be addressed. Are you going to put concrete back in there again? I might. You might. But not until after the planks all shrink together. Oh, yeah. Well, in the meantime, I'll just throw all the lead in there and put her in the water. Yep. Those are lead? Yep. That's going in. Those didn't come with the boat, did they? No, I assembled those. Where'd you get them? Some came out of a boat that I helped to cut up. She's supposed to sail on this line, on this water line. She's supposed to sink to that point and settle laterally on that line. So that's what you do. You don't put all your ballast in and then and then paint a new water line. You paint the water line where it's supposed to go by design. Yep. And then you ballast it. You move it around inside until she sits right. I still have to add the masts and interior so it'll change over time so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put any concrete with the lead at first I'm just gonna put the lead in float it yep. let it take up let those planks shrink together on the inside get everything where I like it and then I will probably pour cement and put the lead into cement Wow I think I don't know that's my current thinking <laughs> changes all the time what's in between the planks you're looking at putty, but below the putty is cotton. There's a wedge shape, and then you use a set of irons. It looks like a wide screwdriver. You loop the cotton into the seam, and then you come along and drive it. It ends up being 
a little channel about three sixteenths, quarter inch deep. Yep. You come in with putty and cover up all the cotton with putty. And then you paint over the putty. Yep. It's putty. Putty. Even under the water line, it's putty and cotton. Yep. Huh. Why cotton? Is that... Uh, the method is thousands of years old. Yeah. It's just a way if you take two pieces of wood and you fit them as closely as you can and you drive the cotton, it's kind of like driving a wedge at that point because you're really packing it in tight and it also kind of it digs into each plank a little bit so now it's like a sort of keying them together and it's like a skin. When, they, when it swells tight it just shrink, it just jams that cotton yep. in there and there's nothing better. If you put a rubber it won't compress the way cotton does. It's wild that wooden hull boats by design depend on the fact that the wood will swell. I love that. It's like the secret ingredient is water. You build yeah. it and then you add water and it soaks into the wood and everything just gets it just gets tight solid skin. And it doesn't happen until you put her in the water. Yep. Wow. That's right. And even if you could find a piece of wood that was four feet wide, it wouldn't be desirable because wood shrinks and contracts all the time, depending on the humidity and the stuff. So it's like uh, you want to build it out of strips. Huh. I like things that evolve and then don't change much over time because that means yeah, um, you arrived at something. Yep. Uh, it works. It works. It has for for countless years. Yeah. What are those holes you've got right up there that are drawn there on the top sides? Those mark where the screws are. So, so my chain plates go right where those pencil lines are. Yep. And if they just went straight up, the tension from the rig would drive them against the bulwarks and it would be uh, not optimal. So I need to put a little something there, We call, I guess you call it a channel. Chain plates come up the hull and then they kind of go around the channel oh, yeah. to hold it away from the bulwarks. And I need to know where the screws are so when I go to fasten that on, I don't hit the fasteners underneath, so I just marked it with pencil. Do you have the chain plates? You no. gonna make them? I'm gonna make them. Out of stainless? That's just, the jury's still out on that one. Yeah. The other option is um, I have them made locally out of steel and then I have them hot dip galvanized. Wow. Most of the shit on this boat is not fancy, it's galvanized steel. Although I went through and refastened her with bronze, I'm not trying to um, get make her super yachty with lots of bronze. Mm -hmm. And parts. stainless. Yeah, it's more like a, like a work a day. Yep. Uh, easily maintained. Want to see the deck? I do. All right. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Frida. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to see the boat. Okay. Yeah, just go ahead and walk around at whatever part you want, okay? You don't have to ask. Oh, God. Wow. Ooh. You think she's okay, John? Yep, I know she is. Mm -hmm. Pretend you're at the playground, except up really, really high. <laughs>